Good afternoon. Please continue to return your stewardship forms in the weekly collection or mail. All NDA school families are required by NDA to have a current stewardship form on file with the parish. For accepting yard sale donations at the parish office, the birthday and anniversary calendars are still in back. Sign up sheets for the passion play and, and fish fries are on the back table. There's also sign up sheets for uh, liturgical ministers for Easter Vigil, Easter Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday. So if you are going to be here and would like to participate, please put your name on the list. We have two more fish fries left. They start at 4.30 and end at 7. Please bring your cakes for the cake wheel. The 2023 contribution statements are still available in the back of church if you haven't picked yours up yet. The parish office will be making phone calls to all parishioners to see how they want to participate in the family prayer days. The families for the first few weeks are printed in the bulletin. If you're on the list this weekend did not receive a phone call or a message, it's highly likely that the parish office does not have your current phone number. You're encouraged and invited to update your information with the parish office when you make a change and on the annual stewardship forms. Passion play practice will happen in the community center this Tuesday at 7 and Thursday at 6 o'clock. Next week, practices will be Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. Today, the Little Sisters of the Poor are visiting to share with us a message about their mission. They will be at the doors as you exit. Please be as generous as you can. Good afternoon and welcome. We're going to begin today with number 510. We remember number 510. helps sometimes. <laughs> well, we have our dear sisters uh, of uh, the little sisters of the poor, Sister Dora and Sister Michael here as a very welcoming and a generous community. Let us welcome them to our church. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> why rose color vestments? Of course, we are on the way to the happiness of the resurrection, it is the hope of Easter just around the corner. 
we are on the way but not there yet um, today we specially offer all the ten families uh, for the prayer and of course we appreciate them and as a Thanksgiving we read their names here Bob Wanda Blanford <coughs> Mary Catherine Blasey <coughs> sorry Donnie and uh, Linda Blafus uh, Purdue Boykins, Elizabeth Bradshaw, Gordon and Patricia Bramer, Herman Susan, Susan Bramer, Avert Bradshaw, Scott Di Diane uh, Braun, William and Mary Ann Campbell. Now you know why, one reason why I read this name. I'm becoming myself familiar with the American names. <laughs> Let's bring to mind our failures and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. <laughs> God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the, your word reconciled the human race to yourself in the wonderful way, grant we pray that with the prompt devotion and eager faith the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the second book of Chronicles. In these days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send this message to them. And he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets. Until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all the palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has restricted its lost Sabbaths, during all the time lies wasted shall have rest, while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, 
king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. The Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. This says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of, of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. <clears throat> Whoever, therefore, among you belong to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he has for us, ever when we were dead in our transitions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. He is not from works, it is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, 
created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the, and this is the verdict that the light came into the world but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever leaves the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, the fourth Sunday of Lent is called Letari Sunday. Letari uh, is the English pronunciation of the word in Latin. It says uh, Laetare. Laetare means rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord symbolizing church joy in anticipation of the resurrection of our Lord. Well, when we read the gospel passage today, we come across the character Nicodemus. And it's a wonderful character to be meditated. Well, till that I came across the saints of uh, Catholic Church, I never came to know one thing. I'm going to ask this question as a, well, I mean, way of a discussion with you. Well, how many of us know that Nicodemus is, is a saint uh, in the Catholic Church? Nicodemus is a saint in the Catholic Church. I never knew till I go through all the saints' life studied. Well, I may ask one more question on the way. <laughs> Well, Nicodemus realized the truth and uh, he understood that there is sense in what, Je what Jesus Christ is saying. He was a Pharisee and was a member of the Sanhedrin and uh, an important first century Jew. 
Saint uh, Nicodemus, uh, he as he meets Jesus by night to avoid being caught by the other members, and uh, uh, and he is. Uh, doing a religious discussion with Jesus Christ at night and this is beautiful to, to meditate at night such a great personality of that time secretly going to Jesus and they sit together and uh, conversing a discussion sharing questions and answers what a beautiful thing I always dream the same. We get a chance to talk to Jesus Christ like that. We have so many of uh, questions and uh, uh, maybe you know things to be uh, asked to Jesus. Well, this was so beautiful that Nicodemus, even though he was not permitted to talk to Jesus, and it is said later in his life, he. Uh, was helping to press Saint Hedrin to have a trial for Jesus Christ. And they were planning to kill him directly, but it was Nicodemus who was very uh, strongly pressing them uh, that he has the right at least to go for a trial. And later, maybe after death uh, with the Joseph, he is helping for the burial of Jesus Christ. Well, it is said, though there is no such evidences of history, it is said uh, Nicodemus uh, became a martyr for Jesus Christ in his life. Well, when we go through the wonderful gospel passage today, it is clearly given <coughs> um, to, to, to understand the secrets that Moses, Moses' time, the serpent was raised there so that whoever is look at, look at the serpent will have life. And that was symbolic. When before that, the, the symbol or the sign of a, or the presence of a, a serpent was the sign of death has turned back to when it comes to the life of the time of Jesus Christ he was raised in the place of that serpent which was a sign of death has become the sign of life whoever looks at the cross whoever understands the truth of cross will have life so also lifted on the altar the Eucharist, whoever believes in the truth will have life. And Jesus Christ was trying to make the people aware about these things by discussion. And that's what Nicodemus was getting all these from Jesus Christ. And it is said people were not ready to listen to that. And it is said again they like darkness. They like the way they will go. They just don't want to... When we say they like uh, darkness, doesn't mean that it's on, not only that they, they like the uh, filthy, bad behavior or lifestyle in the darkness. It is that they don't want to take hardships, suffering, cross. They are happy to go as it is now, comfortable, safe, and let's go like this, enough. No. Jesus is making them, trying to make them understand, we should take up cross. And that's a part of the victory in life. Look at the cross. That's why we have cross. I know more, all of us are having the cross that we wear or we have in our, in our house. We look at that cross and we get that power grace of God the Holy Spirit through these hardships we get the life that Jesus Christ gave us so two things one love the cross 
and uh, look at the cross and pray. Second, which I like very much, this symbol of uh, the Jesus Christ and uh, Nicodemus is talking can be a wonderful model for us. And here comes my second question. How many of, you, how many of us go for retreats? <laughs> well, we do that. How many of us uh, take one day or at least half day or one hour from, from our life to set apart and have a discussion, silence, or oh, there are wonderful chances of such uh, spiritual talks available in our place. How many of us are listening to that? There are such talks in, in YouTube, Facebook and other places in the social media too. And it's wonderful and wonderful for the elite or richness of a community to have such talks and uh, maybe uh, sessions. And I know that we, we were having a, so much of that. We are planning and let's have more of that in the church. And uh, seriously involved in such discussions, uh, sharings and uh, wonderful spiritual inputs will help all of us to grow to know the truth that's what Nicodemus is giving us such a wonderful example in our life and that's the secret of any um, wonderful uh, grown-up or educated uh, human being by spending little time listening others and uh, enriching ourselves with their knowledge and of course I know, I, I always enjoy that the fact that we all read wonderful books and listen to such talks and let's have more of such uh, projects here to enrich ourselves. So today, as Jesus Christ is, is helping us to understand the truth by looking at the cross, the hardships, the sufferings for the victory which is anticipated, the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ, let us take it up in our life and pray that all these hardships will send us one day to the happiness of heaven and uh, the presence of Jesus Christ and the blessings. Amen. Let us all please stand up and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God and not made, and substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for our men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under a Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Even in times of trouble, we are the work of God's hands. In quiet trust, we present the needs of the church and the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church be healed of all division and grow in unity, charity, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of nations promote peace and respect the dignity of all peoples. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That exiles and political refugees return home safely and enjoy liberty and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who care for the sick, especially those near death, be a radiant sign of God's abiding love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer all of these families up in prayer for their special needs and in thanksgiving for the gift that they are to us. For the families of Bob and Wanda Blanford, Mary Catherine Blasey, Danny and Linda Blaufus, Prudy Boykins, Elizabeth Bradshaw, Gordon and Patricia Bramer, Herman and Suzanne Bramer, Everett Bratcher, Scott and Dana Braun, William and Marianne Campbell. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Francis and Mary Clark and family, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you are rich in mercy. Hear our prayers offered to you in the faith and grant us the immeasurable richness of faith you promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Number 137, Gracious God, number 137.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as, it, it, as is fitting for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race that walked in the darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of re regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of, in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and endured willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring here to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Shelton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be caius to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, the God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, prompted by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray. From every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, you said, dear apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let's offer each other the sign of peace. sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, but only in saying, the body and bread of Jesus Christ may keep us safe for eternal life. Number 333, One Love Released. Number 333. <laughs>
Thank you for the prayer, for the vocation. We have Sister Dora here, and of course, Sister Michael. So Sister Dora uh, is uh, sharing their apostolate and mission to us. Let's uh, listen here. Good afternoon. Thank you, Father, and you parishioners for welcoming Sister Michael and I to celebrate the liturgy with you. We are both currently serving the elderly at our home in St. Joseph home here in Louisville. Our congregation was born one cold winter's night in France in 1839 
when Saint John Jugon, guided by the Holy Spirit, recognized Jesus in the person of Anne Shafine, a blind, paralyzed, and abandoned elderly woman. She carried her home and placed her in her bed. More needy elderly knocked at her door and asked for her care, and the congregation grew very quickly. The Lord has sustained it these 184 years, and we now have 159 homes in 31 countries. Our mission is to offer the neediest elderly of every race and religion a home where they will be welcomed as Christ, cared for as family, and accompanied with dignity until God calls them to himself. St. John Jugon often said, making the elderly happy, that is what counts. We realize that making the elderly happy means believing in the value of their lives. Today, we are more committed than ever to promoting respect for the aged and a greater recognition of their dignity. We renounce euthanasia, assisted suicide, and all forms of elder abuse and neglect. Pope Francis often tells older people that they have special gifts and a specific mission in the church, especially towards the young. He urges them to show young people that a life without love is an arid life, and that love is not only shown in words, but also in actions. And so we invite young people, as well as people of all ages, to come and meet our wonderful residents and experience our mission firsthand. It is hard to describe the joy that is ours to be able to welcome the elderly in need. If I may, I'd like to share with you part of a letter that a gentleman wrote recently after he became a resident of our home. Quote, to mother and all the sisters, thank you for allowing me the honor of being a part of the little sisters of the poor. I am now in my final stage of my life before I go before my God in heaven. What a joy it is to be in this most beautiful home. And that is what it truly is, home. Thanks be to God and thanks to you, mother and all the sisters. End of quote. This is what it is all about. We badly need more little sisters to welcome seniors like him. Please pray for an increase of vocations. I encourage our young people here today to consider the possibility that God may be calling you also to give yourselves entirely to him to serve the poor with joy. After my Sister Michael, uh, Nancy and I will be happy to meet you and if you wish to receive your gift at the door. If you are unprepared, we have envelopes for you. If you care to take them home and send them, in at your convenience. We do accept checks. All you have to do is address to the little sisters, sign your name, and we'll be happy to fill in the rest. <laughs> Thank you for helping us to care for the neediest elderly with your generous gift, but even more importantly, by your prayers. The little sisters and our residents pray for you daily and offer a Mass monthly for your intentions. May God bless you abundantly. Thank you, Sister Dora. I would like to appreciate you for three reasons. One, of course, it seems or it looks at least to me that your first language is not English and you, you sound better than my English. <laughs> the second reason, 
you might have seen her here earlier in our church. It's her 46 years of perpetual vow as sister or as a nun in the congregation. And the sister Michael, <laughs> sister Michael is 56 years. And for that we congratulate and appreciate her. And the third reason, you go around and announce the word of God and you appreciate for all the support and help from little generosity whatever we are showing but you are so grateful about all the donations and help and uh, inviting people for a vocation and you are giving the presence of angels in this world thank you so much sisters thank you for your coming to our church I need not say much about let us be generous. There's nothing that we may lose if we be generous to such a wonderful, genuine cause. Let's do that today and every day in our life. Uh, meanwhile, let me congratulate and uh, appreciate all those who helped to do the tree of life here on the right side on the wall. If you, if you haven't seen, I would suggest of course you should uh, go up to the table for the envelope but you can come down and see that the tree here that green leaves and all the doves there and all the names of our parishioners over on that wall here right now let us pray oh god who enlighten everyone who comes into this world Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all the sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and glorify our Lord by our life. Thank you, God. Number 129, Beyond the Days, verses 1 and 4. <clears throat> 